Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Czarface called A Fistful of Peril. You know, sometimes I've got a lengthy diatribe to open up these reviews, and sometimes I just really don't. Sometimes the formula is so strong, so well refined, so deceptively simple, then complicated, then simple again. At its core, you don't really need to say a lot. Sometimes if you're just a fan of the genre and sound, you just get it on some level. And for me, Zarface, the collaboration project between the underground duo 7L and Esoteric, and the Wu-Tang Clan member Inspected Deck, that's that sort of project for me. On the surface, it's over the top old school boom bap hip hop that goes hard as hell in terms of the bars but peel beneath the surface and you'll find the meticulous construction and the interweaving explosive samples and interconnected rhyme schemes and yet at the end of the day it's not a record that's aiming to do anything beyond bringing back some old-fashioned hard-hitting lyricism and bars back into the game and for the most part that's really all you need as such even though there's a ton of fantastic punchlines crammed into every Zarface album especially the excellent sophomore project every hero needs a villain that was inches away from my top 25 albums of 2015 it also means they're projects that i don't really feel the need to dig into in that much detail not because the punchlines really speak for themselves and that because so many of the grooves and flows give this album an easygoing charm that's really hard to replicate and yet it's simple it just works for me on some basic level. But while, of course, I was going to cover A Fistful Apparel, cute reference there, I was a little bit perplexed by what I had heard about it. For one, it swapped out guest stars like Jizza, Ari the Rugged Man, and Raekwon, the latter who featured on Nightcrawler, a song that was very nearly making my list for my top 50 songs of 2015, for some artists that might not have the same name recognition. Sure, we got Psycho Les at the Beat Nuts, but when you throw in Conway and Blacaston and Mayhem Lauren, the last of which I wasn't all that impressed with on the last album, I was a little bit concerned, especially considering this project was a lot shorter than the last one, down from nearly an hour to around 35 minutes. So, okay, maybe trimming off some of the fat might help, so how is a fistful apparel? Well, honestly... I wasn't really wild about this across the board. It's still good, as I described, the Zarface formula has been proven to work pretty effectively, but where every hero needs a villain felt bigger, rougher, sharper, more energetic than its debut, a fistful apparel just doesn't. In terms of grimy old school boom bap, it's got some great moments, but somehow they don't really add up to as much as I was hoping. Pretty much across the board too, and that is a little bit disappointing. Still good, but not great. And again, it's tough to pinpoint exactly why, because it's not like Esoteric and Inspected Deck somehow became less potent lyricists. These guys can both flow ridiculously well, fusing eclectic lyrical ideas and concepts as they throw bars back and forth with distinctive vocal tones. Now, you could make the argument that they don't really differentiate their content or style of punchlines between them, but that's mostly in the case in the previous albums, and again, these guys are great rappers and do have some solid chemistry. Even if in the midsection of this record, it does feel a little like Esoteric isn't bringing nearly as much intensity as you would hope on songs like Man Machine Monster or Dare is a Dark Side, and it doesn't help that the guest stars that they replaced aren't really on the same level as their replacements. I dug Blacaston on Tarantulas, but Conway's delivery and bars didn't have the same sort of color or flair compared to the rest of Zarface. A lesser issue with Psycho Les on Dust, but even still, it didn't quite blend in with the rest of the song's style. Then there's Taranko with Mayhem Lauren and Rast RFC. Again, Mayhem Lauren was just underwhelming, but Rast RFC's more restrained, sinister set of bars had the descriptive flavor to work, even if the tone felt a tad too dark, if I'm being honest. Granted, tone in both lyrics and instrumentation might be at the root of my issues with this album, and really highlights one of the tricky balancing elements of previous Zarface projects. With a blend of hyperbolic and combative language and nerd references points in wrestling, comics, fantasy, or even sports, you can typically go one of a couple ways in tone. You can go for more cartoonish territory, or step towards more serious subject matter, careful to balance the harsher elements of the language or lyrical flourishes that match the gravity of the content. Run the Jewels a good example of this, as they pursued both of these options in the past couple of years. The former on their debut, the latter on Run the Jewels 2. And Starface were also kind of working in that lane, tending to use the broad, cartoonish blend of samples, references, and humor to balance everything all out. But A Fistful Apparel doesn't really hit that balance as well. The instrumental tones and sound are darker, they tend to be harsher, less melodic. When placed against samples that are still as broadly cartoonish or more steeped in some modern nerd territory, I can swear they're both figure and comic book unboxing video samples on a few of these tracks. Well, again, the balance feels a little bit more tenuous. And what becomes an issue lyrically, when the majority of the punchlines pull 
pull from Game of Thrones, Stranger Things, Marvel Comics, Peter Jackson and Ray Harryhausen movies, and a fake commercial for Zarface pajamas. Seriously. And not only are your guest stars not really on that same level, but your production doesn't really fit in with it either. Now, that's not saying the production is bad. Far from it. It's got a scuzzy grime to it that's certainly likable and can hit with some impact. But take that electric level intro and outro as a prime example to shift in sound. Windswept gurgling synths and minor chord progressions that blakes into the two in the chest with flattened guitars and bassy synth with gurgling carrying any sort of melody against the sleigh bells. And I can't be the only one who was expecting a little bit more impact or punch or color or flair, was I? The sonic palette is kind of similar to Every Hero Needs a Villain, but the beats in production don't seem to have the same depth to them. Similar case for Czar Wars. Even with a more prominent guitar line driving off the blur of cymbals and the collage of samples around them, the beats and the grooves don't seem to hit with the same impact for me. The blocky crunch of dust, it does kind of get there with the noisier drums, as does the bass heavy groove of Talk That Talk against the eerie twinkle of guitar, the warping guitars that play off the deeper punch of the beat and all in together now, and the rattle of the bass against the scratchy percussion, cowbell, and dirty horns on Revenge on Lizard City. It has that ridiculous Zarface pajama commercial at the end that, yeah, I actually kind of found it a little bit endearing. Hell, the thicker, bigger synth and drums against the reverse guitar leads on Steranko are actually pretty menacing with a little bit more muscle. The scratchy switch up into the organ saturated second half that breaks into a stalking guitar tone that's pretty wicked, which they then unfortunately pivot out of again in the final minute for something that's a little bit flatter in the tones, and that's honestly not a good choice. But when we get to the slower, more eerie tracks like Machine Man Monster with the twinkle keys and drippy snap against the main guitar and bass group, or maybe Dare is a Dark Side with the wheedling synth effects against the deeper drums that switches up to this fantasy-inspired melodic interlude that just feels kind of wonky, or the giant snore or the backing tone on Tarantula, or the blur of spacey, gurgling synths against the thicker bass beat of Sabres. I just can't get into the grooves the same way. The songs are more serious played and the melodies, a lot more minor progressions, and honestly, that doesn't strike me for the right fit for this sort of content. And maybe that's a big part of the larger issue with the album as a whole. Yeah, I might have tilted slightly darker in the instrumentation, but it did so at the expense of the more colorful melodies, the swaggering energy, and the muscle that made previous projects actually connect for me. A Fistful Apparel pushes that balance that I described to the absolute limit. Yes, the bars and flows are great, but balancing them against production that feels smaller and arguably less catchy and fun strikes me as a misstep. I appreciate the desire to test and expand the formula, but when you pair it with songs that feel more abbreviated, subject matter that is still not going any deeper, and less impressive guest stars overall, I'm giving this a 7 out of 10 and a recommendation, but not more than any other Zarface albums. It's still pretty fun, Dust All In Together Now and Revenge on Lizard City are damn solid tracks, but they have done better in the past, and I can only hope that the balance kind of corrects itself soon. Again, good, not great. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Got the poll up here. So what do you guys think about this Zarface album? I've heard some comments in your minds that it wasn't really as good as Every Hero Needs a Villain, but I'd like to hear a little bit more feedback on there just to see where everything lines up. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming up that you want me to take a look at, I will try to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.